Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. I just arrived like um, three hours ago, and I am already overwhelmed by what uh, is going on here. So many machines, so many cool stuff. Actually, this is my first time at the event. And um, at the moment, I'm a bit nervous because uh, so many people today, and my first time here as well. So um, as you can see that I'm not um, a native speaker, and when I'm nervous, I tend to speak a little bit unclearly. So if you do not understand me, please give me a signal, like raise your hand, something like that. Thank you. And um, so um, my present presentation today is about building our own personalized open textile production line. Okay, so let's start. Um, uh, first of all, let me introduce a little bit about myself. Um, okay, so my name is again pronounced in Vietnamese, uh, Hong Phuc. I'm from uh, Vietnam. And um, I come from uh, the Mekong Delta, which is um, quite a poor region uh, in south of Vietnam. And uh, in my region, you know, maybe some of you are wearing the clothes that produce uh, for my region. So we we have a lot, a lot of uh, clothes factory um, that uh, exported clothes to to Europe and uh, the U.S. And uh, on the screen, you can see here this is uh, a sewing uh, pattern for for what I'm wearing right now. So I'm going to show you. Um, so this is what I'm wearing right now is a Vietnamese um, traditional dress. So it is very popular back to the 60s and 70s, but nowadays you can hardly see it in Vietnam anymore unless you come to an event like this. Then you can see the Ao Yai. Okay, so this is um, the assemble of um, a sewing pattern. Like before, you you sew uh, like the rest of it. You need to come. Uh, you need to have the pattern. And um, okay, so let's continue. So um, uh, the region where I come from, we would produce a lot of clothes, and uh, we can see a lot of problems are, are going on in the garment industry. And um, today, I would like to to, to mention uh, to discuss about the issue and how we can solve them. And um, so um, our goal of the project is to make a revolution for the textile and garment industry. Um, there are a lot, a lot of examples to show that the system is broken. And uh, so let's see how can we uh, fix it. OK, so um, get where it is. This is not in Vietnam. This is a picture that's taken uh, in Dubai about three months ago. So uh, Dubai, as we know, this is a really uh, glamorous city, the tallest building in the world, the best hotel in the world, and the biggest mall in the world. And they have probably the most oil in the world. <laughs> Maybe it's not right, but so you know, the city are abundant energy. You know, on the street, you, there are a lot of uh, bus stops, and you, when you go inside the bus stop, they install air conditioning in all the bus stops. And uh, inside the bus stop, they even uh, uh, advertising messages saying that here in Dubai, it's always 23 degrees Celsius. So that's how they use uh, energy. And the, this is in the middle of the city of Dubai. And this is a small tailor, tailor shop. Most of the guys are come from Bangladesh or Pakistan. And you can see they have no window in their working area, no aircon, only one fan installed in the ceiling. And in Dubai, during the summer, the temperature can get above 40 degrees. And this is the condition that these uh, tailors are working on at the moment. OK, so um, next one. Uh, and uh, this is um, so. This one is the picture that I take from my cell phone. I've been living in Dubai for a few months, and this one is the picture that I've taken from the internet because it's very difficult to get access into the factory in China or, or Vietnam. Um, so this is uh, a um, just a sample picture of uh, a factory in in China. But nowadays, you know, a lot of uh, clothing um, manufacturers are moving to Vietnam because um, we have cheaper labor costs and um, we just uh, very low to uh, to China. So um, we we receiving a lot a lot of foreign investment in the garment industry. And so what it is, I believe. Uh, you guys still remember the deadliest accident in the garment industry? Just happened one year ago. 
um, in a sub-district of uh, Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. There were about 1,129 people died and more than 2,500 injured after this accident. So, um, so you can see that um, you know the people really don't care about the condition of the building for they do not care about the, the laborers, and uh, that's how the, the building collapsed. Uh, so the next thing, um, either this picture is taken at a factory very close to my house in, uh, the, in, in the home in the city of Kento, and uh, in fact one of my cousins she used to work there. She has to work uh, six days uh, uh, six days a week and about thirteen hours per day, and only earn one hundred and fifteen dollars per month, which is only around four dollars and forty four dollar and forty cent per day for thirteen hours. So, yeah, so, so what this example tell us, uh, it means that the labor, the labor inside the, the, the textile industry is really unfair for them because this is a really 1.7 trillion industry, but the people who work in this, uh, in this uh, industry majority don't make a lot of money. Uh, okay, so next thing is, um, the next um, problems or, or challenges that we are facing right now in the textile and garments are just um, digital. Uh, what do I mean by that? So you know, now it's winter, but every season you see a lot of color, a lot of collection and style in the mall, in the, in the shopping area, a lot of clothes out there. The fashion are growing very fast, but what hasn't changed much is the, the way how they produce the clothes. So a, a lot of factory and, and businesses are still using machinery that's stuck in, in the 80s. Why is it like that? Because it's cheaper for them to pay, to pay labor than to upgrade the machine. Okay, so the next one, and um, one of the um, the biggest um, issue uh, that come from the, the the industry is the pollution. So you can see that 70, uh, seven, um, 17 to twenty percent of uh, industrial water pollution come from the textile uh, dyeing and treatment, and it uh, creates seventy two toxic chemicals originate solely from dyeing in which 30% cannot be removed. And uh, this is really bad for our environment. You see the, the water if a river uh, is red, but if you, if you have visited Ho Chi Minh City, you can see that a lot of area, the, the river actually black, not the red like this. Okay, so, um, and the next, the next issue that I want to mention here is, um, uh, clothing are not produced locally anymore, especially here in Europe and the U.S. because uh, more of um, clothing production are moving to developing countries like ours or Bangladesh, China, uh, Indonesia, the Philippines, and you you, you don't see a lot of factories uh, in Europe um, anymore. So it, it also means that um, um, now like um, the, the people get less and less access to, 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 to clothes production and they maybe in the future nobody will know how to make clothes anymore because you never make them, you just go to the shop and buy them. Okay. So next one. And uh, another issue uh, comes from the consumer. So uh, I don't know if you ever faced the, the, the issue that you go to the shopping mall spending several hours but couldn't find the clothes that fit you. This is what happened to me all the time. So I've been traveling a lot during the last year. I've been living in Dubai. I was uh, in Singapore and I was in the US before. So my uh, biggest issue, I can never find clothes that fit me. So, uh, um, and uh, I used to go to shopping mall with a friend of mine from Australia. She's really beautiful, uh, standard model, so you can find all the clothes that fit her. And after spending several hours together, couldn't find the, the clothes for me, so she would say, she would make a joke like that, okay, so uh, if there is a person that's smaller than me in the world, probably a 12 year old, year old child. But this is not true because in Vietnam, my size is really normal, medium. There's also smaller people compared to me. So then, then, you, should, uh, then you can understand that how struggling they are to find clothes that fit them if they ever travel to Europe or the US. 
And also, another problem that we are, that, that, that we can see very well is we organize events in Asia every year. We have a lot of um, um, friends and speakers come from Europe and the U.S. And if it happened that they for, forgot to carry their clothes, they couldn't manage to find the clothes that fit them inside Asia. It's very difficult for them. And uh, what is it? So this is the... Uh, so the measure, the, the, the sizes are, are not standard, even though they say, okay, even though they said, okay, so we make standard sizes for the industry, we have a small, medium, large, but the fact is, look at Germany, France, Italy, the size are not the same, even though for the same piece of uh, shirt or, or jeans, and this is only one example, and you could imagine how many products that you have out there, it's just like impossible um, to have, to do... To, to get something that fits you, like so difficult to understand. And now in China, what is this? Okay, so let me go back a little bit. And uh, okay, so the next one, uh, another issue, uh, the broken customer relationship. No room in the current large industry model for make to measure clothing in tools and design. So in the past, we used to, um, to go to the shop, get our measurement done, and then Tyler make our rest. But nowadays, we don't have the chance to interact with Tyler's or, um, or designer anymore. And, and that's it, like come back to the issue that that's why you can never find something that fits you. Um, the, next, um, the next problem is the broken production system. What does that mean? Tools are expensive and not interoperable and um, proprietary format. What does that mean? So that means that um, a lot of um, software um, the, uh, in the industry are, are, are closed and very uh, expensive. That's why very few people or designers got access to these, um, to these tools. And uh, the next thing is designer to manuf manufacturers based on the tools. So now designer, if they want to uh, the manufacturer to, to produce their, their clothes or, or their design, they need to use the same tool because there isn't anything else that uh, uh, available, um, everything close. And for them, for, for some small de designer, they are very active, they have nice ideas, but they cannot af afford the same tool. That's the issue. And uh, the next one, it must order uh, in large batch size, which is like very big quality. So um, the fashion industry is all about big quality. So if you just want to produce a few shirts or, 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 or a few skirts, it's very difficult for you to find a producer um, that can do uh, this kind of job for you. The, the last uh, point is designer want a quick revision. If you are a designer, normally you have a piece of, uh, of, of work and then you want to, pre to want to produce it to see if you can change it or something, but it's very difficult to, to be done. You have to spend a lot of time for a producer and then have to travel back and forth so and convince them to bring out one piece for you so you can see it and then continue to produce. So it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, the next, um, so the, the next uh, um, problem is um, happen in the distribution uh, system. So the distribu uh, distribution system for the industry is just for huge production runs. Uh, for instance, uh, like again, I would just want to, to emphasize again, um, fashion industry is just for big quantity. Um, and these small and medium designers cannot get access to, to the industry uh, channels. Also, no space for smaller, smaller designers in corporate stores like H&M or Zara. You can just not design something and say, okay, uh, I will sell it at Zara or, um, or H&M. And it's, and they don't do that. Okay, so, so um, according to the, 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 the few uh, examples that I showed you just now, it just, um, is this something so funny? I don't know. <laughs> this is <like> something wrong. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so, uh, so it just like everything is broken, like in every level of, uh, of the industry is broken. And for designer, for production, for customer ourselves, and also the distribu uh, distribution general, everything seems broken and uh, doesn't work. So how to fix it? 
Uh, this is a picture of um, our friend in the um, open tech uh, community in Berlin. I believe that uh, she also here today. So Yvonne is uh, a designer and also consumer herself. So she wants to have a fair and environmental friendly solution. She wants to, to produce locally. She wants to have um, open source software and she wants to be able to, to, do, um, to express herself in a creative way. So how to get it right for Yvonne and the rest of us? That's the question here. And uh, we have a few ideas of how to solve uh, these problems. Uh, so uh, we come up with something, we, we, we are looking into the news interfaces for garment and textile production in the free and open source software and hardware, in uh, open data formats and in uh, open garment marketplaces. Okay, so um, okay, so what's next for the second half of? Um, so I have come to the the first half of the presentation. So for the second half of the presentation, uh, I will introduce to you well, what are um, all the happening out there. Uh, so uh, on the screen, it was um, a simple business of a VQ. So VQ is um, the term for Vietnamese who live overseas. So this family married to the U.S. in um, 19, about like in, in the 90s, and uh, so they they create a business like there is a website that allow people from the U.S. to to provide to input their measurement, and then the data will be sent to the local to to the um, to the family back. Home. So, because uh, in Vietnam uh, we produce cheap, but in the US you cannot afford to, to do to make something customized in the US. But then the family in Vietnam, uh, we based on the measurement, and they can also select the suit that they want uh, that they want to produce. They produce something from Vietnam, and then they will ship over to the family in the US, and then this family will then um, uh, deliver this uh, custom made piece of uh, of suit to the American uh, to American people. So this is just uh, one model of business, but what is good about this model is the website allows you to, to provide your measurement, and, um, and this is what we want to do. So but they create this only for their own business, but our idea is we want to have a solution that, uh, that allows people to input their measurement um, in a way that um, we can uh, we can share and we can can store it can can um, digitalize uh, the measurement. That why we come up with a project called um, 3D um, the 3D body measurement, and um, I would um, I will show you um, a prototype of this project. Give me. Okay, so um, so I I only create something beforehand because um, I don't want to do waste everyone time. So so what, let's see what can we do here. So we click on the measurement list and uh, let's see. Okay, give me some more. Okay, so this is um, the three D is a very simple project. And then let's see what can we do here. Let's change the this one to seventy. See, <laughs> you see how people change it. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, we press. Yeah. You like it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So this is just. One idea. So the project is still very new, and uh, we do. We want to do like a lot more. We want to do like we can change the sizes. We want to put um, to to put all the measure. This is not the, okay. So when you see in the first list, let's go back to the list. Um, this is not all the measurement you have on on your body. There are a lot more. So we are still working on it. And um, so later on, we want to do more things with it. Not just that we want to have a 3D body measurement on the smartphone, where you can just use your phone to, to get your, your measurement and send it to, to, to a database that um, can be shared with everyone. Yeah, you can also have um, a female body. Yeah, see, you see the difference? <laughs> Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to slide. Uh, 
Okay, so um, the code are available on GitHub if you want to, to check it out and install on your computer to test it. Uh, so after we uh, we get uh, we got the measurement, what we, what we're gonna do with it? Okay, so we come up with um, okay. So uh, this is uh, some um, uh, at the start of the project we already have a very international team. We have people from Germany. German people always participate in anything, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a compliment. This is a compliment. <laughs> I wish I could be German. So, and also we have people from India, from Sri Lanka, um, who joined us for this project. And I hope today, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I hope today we can get uh, more people to join uh, our project. Um, okay. So, uh, by the way, Force Asia um, is uh, an uh, is an organization that I've been involved for the last five years and in initially started in Vietnam to support uh, the development of free and open source software and uh, try to adapt um, open technology for social chain uh, with a focus on Asian user. Um, okay, so after you have the, the measurement, what do you what do you want to do next? Uh, we need to store it somehow. That's why some of our members uh, in the community have an idea of develop uh, a human definition format. Uh, it's, it's just a file where you can store um, your measurement. And you can check out here. I'm not an expert, but uh, it's always a few people are laughing, but maybe you know more than me. Yeah, okay, so next one. Okay, so we have um, we have measurement. We have a way to store the measurement. Uh, what do you want? Uh, what do we want to do next? So uh, for the next thing, I would like to to talk about the open source uh, pattern making. Uh, pattern. So what a pattern is the one that I show you in the beginning of the fly uh, the the slide. Um, so there's. Um, uh, so how is that? Is it a template? Uh, a template so in which you can, um, uh, uh, from which all the parts of your garment can be tried on a fabric before before they cut and, and assemble them together. And um, so, uh, the, so one of the, the software, the open source software that um, uh, that created by our, by our friend called Susan Spencer from the U.S. Uh, about um, a few years ago. So what Susan does is, is uh, Susan is a um, is a old American. Okay, shouldn't say old. Uh, is a is an American lady. She's really lovely. Really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she retired, and uh, so um, so she tried to think of she liked to to, to sew. She she she, uh, she mentioned in her story that she started to sew when she was uh, four years old, but she didn't have chance to do it uh, throughout her life. But now she retired and she wanted to, to go back to sewing to do something with it, and she realized that um, over fifty years nothing had changed much. Like she. She, she still do the same thing like she did uh, in the old time. So um, she come up with the idea of a uh, software that can create digital pattern. So what she did was she, um, she tried to, to create pattern based on a uh, mathematical um, formula, cut it in Python, and then executive in uh, Inkscape um, extension, and uh, try to export in uh, FVG, and then from FVG create a PDF that can be that can send to the printer that bring out the pattern that uh, to bring out the sewing pattern. And um, so I met uh, Susan. Um, uh, Three years ago at LGA, um, LGM Libre Graphics meeting, and during the, the past uh, three years, uh, I met her almost every every year, and always listened to her like how how she did the project and everything, and she also showed me how to create pattern uh, based on uh, based on uh, mathematical formula. Uh, so that's why I try, um, I try like some something with um, processing, and it turned out that you can also generate some kind of uh, pattern in processing. So it means that there's a lot of uh, alternatives. Uh, um, there maybe there's also other solution with other free software that can help you to to create um, sewing pattern. 
and this is um, another project. So because of this work, we, we got um, other people to contact us so to, uh, to, to tell us about their project. And this is another software uh, that's called Project Valentina, uh, developed on uh, QC5 uh, from Roman, a guy from the Ukraine. And uh, yeah, so that is uh, about um, pattern, making pattern, sewing pattern. And uh, the next thing that I want to, the next thing that I want to um, to introduce to you is um, embroidery. Uh, do you know embroidery? Yes. No. Uh, embroidery. Um, uh, yes. Uh, yes. This. Embroidery, can could you please stand up? <laughs> yes. Okay, so you see on her jacket, so this is um, uh, the process of making um, a pattern on your fabric uh, by teaching, by, by thread, and uh, this is uh, em embroidery. So um, how, in the old time, how do we do embroidery? A lot of people sitting down and do it by hand. They spend all day and night to do to do this kind of work, but uh, recently, they, they, of course, they also have uh, the machine uh, to do uh, embroidery, embroidery. But the machine is very expensive. Um, not everyone can afford this kind of machine. Uh, so uh, you know, um, uh, George and um, Zotanen, they start uh, a project called Embroider Model, which is a software that creates your your own em embroidery design in the CAD program and then generate embroidery files for home and commercial machine. And uh, they started a Kickstarter campaign this year, but unfortunately they, they, they weren't successful. I don't know, not much interest for embroidery, I guess. So, and, okay, so what else? Yes. Um, by the way, I just, um, uh, as we talk about embroidery in the, I don't know how to call that big hall where a lot of machines are, there is uh, a person called Alexandra Brook. He came with a embroider machine. So if you want to, to see how it looks like, he has right a very big machine, very close to, to the stage. And it's, it creates a strange sound. You can hear from, from far away. So you can just come there and he can show you how the embroidery machine works. Uh, okay, so the next things. Uh, the next thing that I want uh, to mention here is knitting. Knitting, I believe we know knitting because what we wear right now for winter, most of the, the clothes that we that we wear are knitting. So knitting, actually, there is um, a big interest um, come from hackers for knitting machine. Why is it like that? I think because for knitting, you can create. Um, uh, a piece of shirt or a piece of garment from the beginning to an end. So there, there are not a lot of um, process that need to go through. You don't need to go to uh, an overlocking shop. You don't need to um, you don't need to, to do pattern cuts. You can produce everything at once. So that's why there are big interest come from uh, the, the hackers and developer side for this. And um, on the uh, on the screen, there is uh, an example of a shop in London that um, allow customer to look at um, knitting and to choose their own pattern and print it out their shop, uh, print it out their their, their clothes uh, inside the shop at the time that they come to um, to that store in, in London. This is just reference, and um, uh, the next project is um, Open Knit, which is, uh, you know this one? So um, started from uh, Gija Rubio from uh, Barcelona. And this is um, a very interesting project. So in a moment, I, I will show you um, a video on this. And uh, together with his team, he also they also developed a, a software called Knitted, which um, allow you to make your own design and communicate uh, with that um, um, own construction knitting machine. So uh, let's see the um, the video.
So you like it, huh? So um, yes. Yeah, so at the end, we say making in the neighborhood. This is our goal. This is what we want to do. We want to produce locally, right here in your hometown. And uh, so the next project is also about um, what is this here? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you hear me coming? Sorry about that. Ah, oh, okay, so what is this? Uh, so this is um, a picture that taken in the um, MeshCon in Berlin just a few months ago. And, um, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, I forgot her name. <laughs> I, I remember, I, but I no, but so so um, she came to the event, and um, so what 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 is um, about her? So um, um, she is a woman that own fifth uh, fifteen knitting machine at home. She loved to knit, and she came to um, to MeshCon. She met uh, she met a lot of hackers and learned about how they they hack the, the, the knitting machine, and uh, she really excited, and and she 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 won uh, you. Like hackers, developer to to help her to to upgrade her uh, knitting machine, and this is uh, what we want to do next to hack more knitting machine. And uh, another project also about knitting. I yep, uh, all yarns are beautiful, and this project is come from Germany, München, and. Uh, Fortunately, we have the two founder of this uh, project here today, Tristan and Anz from Munich. And um, so there will be a partner uh, today. They will come on stage and uh, give a live demo for us. So please join us on stage. Hi. So uh, my name is Enz, I'm from the KS Computer Club Munich, and I just will show you a short our IR project. Uh, what we have here is an old knitting machine from Brother from the 70s. These machines uh, are produced till the 90s, so they are not produced anymore. And what we actually did, um, we replaced the whole electronics uh, with an Arduino, so you can control it with a standard PC or whatever, and wrote a small uh, tool in Python. Uh, to use it, and what you now can do is you can knit any uh, graphic you want, and I will show you quickly. So we uh, here we ha we have the yarn and whatever, and I I already started uh, with the knitting, so it's a bit easier. And all you have to do now is to move it uh, from the left to the right. And it does nothing. <laughs>
Wait a second. Okay, it won't work. Um, so just imagine how it would work. <laughs> <laughs> and you can maybe hear the sound, the lovely sound of the machine. Yeah. So um, if it would work, uh, then you, you can see a nicely picture of the uh, Congress logo, but it doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you so much. It's so typical, right? It's, it will be strange if it works now. So, but that's why uh, that, that that is why we are here. We need to to fix the problem. We need to to do more stuff. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Anne. And um, so let's continue. I'm almost done. Uh, so, um, so these um, all these uh, problems, all these example of what's um, already there in the in the in the market. So, what are the next step? We need more machine to hack and liberate. We need fashion tech makers spaces. We need software developers and designer. We need to start a local production everywhere and control environmental standards. And um, we need makers to start their own businesses and uh, open fashion store. Okay, so, and uh, one of the last slide, the reason why I'm here today, I'm looking for help. So, um, I hope that uh, some of you um, you know, it's always uh, the problem. So people say that the designer in the fashion industry, they don't talk to the hackers. They are always lack of communication between technology and fashion. So that is um, our idea. We want to create a network of people who work together to hack more machine, to, to build um, a, a new a knitting machine from 3D printers, or to join our open XLab network of makers. Um, by the way, this picture is um, it's called an uh, Audi knitting machine, and uh, majority part of it uh, are made from plastic. And um, so, if you have any ideas how to help us to to create a personalized open textile production line, then um, give your ideas. Uh, this is a few places that uh, our community members will be there to talk with you, to discuss with you more. So we will be at the um, Fostum in Brussels, January 31st to February 1, Room of Internet of Things. And um, we have uh, one big event coming up in Singapore from March 13 to, to 15, uh, Force Asia. And uh, we will be then at the Open Hardware Check and also at the Open Tech Summit in Berlin, May 15, also Open Hardware Check. And on the next Mesh, uh, MeshCon conference, uh, Fashion Tech Week in Berlin, October 6 to 12. Hope to you, uh, you, you can join us then. And uh, that's it. By the way, I forgot to say uh, thank you so much for your attention and thank you for not raising your hand. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Thanks for that awesome talk. We had a lot of fun. Um, we have plenty of time left because of your um, precise talk. So we can have some questions uh, if you're interested. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, just stand behind the microphones and wait for my signal. And until that, uh, is there any questions from the internet, from the people that are not currently right here? Aprika. Yes, there are. So I have the first question uh, regarding the knitting machine. People were really impressed by the video you showed. I'm here, um, right behind. Yes. 
Um, so, and they ask, like, how long does it take to make one piece of clothing with such a knit knitting machine, like you showed in the video? Um, uh, about three hours. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it depends, also it depends on what type of clothes that you want to make. You want to make a sweater, you want to make a shirt, we could have um, Let's see who can answer this question. Uh, and how about your machine? What, what do you think? How long does it take? It's, well, uh, uh, with our machine, you have to do a little bit more uh, handwork. Um, it's not full automatic like the knitting machine, but um, yeah, it depends on about for a scarf, you need about uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or and for a pillow, you need about 30 minutes, and for a full sweater, about uh, yeah, three hours, four hours. Thank you. The gentleman in the red pullover, what's your question? Yeah, my, my question about uh, the, the quality of the, the garments. Um, I had some, some things made some, some time ago in a, uh, well, some foreign country, and, and then the shirts came out uh, after some uh, year, they, they were worn out, and the quality of the cotton was not good enough to, my, uh, to what I wanted. So how do you how would you uh, think of, of managing the quality of the the garment? I don't like uh, the quality of uh, clothing like H and M, which wears out in three months. I want to wear my clothes for many years. Yes, uh, exactly. That was we all want to do. We want to to keep our clothes as long as possible. But also, this is a a problem that we have now in the uh, industry. Like for me, it's my clothes only after what three or three times it will worn out. You cannot wear them anymore. So um, a lot of uh, so, um, so we have a few research. We, we're not doing the, the research ourselves for, for the fabric, but I read on the news a lot of uh, some people come up with um, making fabric from bacteria, from, from beer bacteria, and, and, and they have an idea of making a better fab fabric with um, some um, material that friendly for environment. And this is also the, our biggest uh, question. We want to produce better clothes. How can we do this? I cannot answer this question because I don't have a solution myself. But maybe some of the people here will have and will tell us. Some people may be researchers and they will dive deep into it, how to create um, better quality fabric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, would you please ask your question and get close to the microphone so we can all listen to you. Hello. Yeah, working. Um, one question. You were showing us patterns and knitting and embroidery. How do you take control of the sewing process? In the beginning, you showed one website where people are connected with local uh, sewing people. But is that website part of your project or how, um, how do you deal with that? Uh, so our project, so we are a network, so we did the body measurement, so we also do um, uh, the patterns uh, uh, software, but this is also example of different projects that are going on, this is not ours. Uh, like we, we are a community, a network of different people, and the website, the people make uh, that I show for, from the US, the business that they, uh, they, they, they input the measurement, this is just a business that in a sample that we, we want to show what is it out there and what we can do with this. It's, it's not inside our project, but we, we wanted to show the possibility and how we can uh, work with this. Yeah. Okay, so you only deal with the measurement software, but you don't go to the whole sewing? Uh, measurement software and pattern is also related to sewing. We also try to develop um, software to create patterns. And this is, I mentioned the um, Valentino project or Tau MetaTau. They are inside our network. So we have a lot, a lot of members and each person do different things. Okay, no, the only question was who is sewing the clothes from the patterns? Who is sewing the clothes from the patterns? Let's say uh, the project Tao Meta Tao, Susan is the uh, designer and she also sew herself. So okay. you get a, a pattern and then you sew yourself. But the idea for the future is we create a network of designer, producer, and then the, 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 the um, database will connect and everyone can attract the database. They can, the designer can have the direct um, uh, contact with producer and then we produce and then we sew the pattern for themselves or you can have some you can sew it at home yeah that's okay. the idea for the future yeah. thank you thank you for the question I think we should check whether we have questions from the internet Africa yes we have so the next question from the internet is whether you and your organization um, are also looking in open local fabrication, uh, fabric production, like with weaving. Um, 
like um, there was someone who turned a knitting machine into a computerized loom to make fabric, like a Webstuhl in German. And so is this something that you're also interested in? Yes, it is. So we are looking for all kinds of possibilities to improve the industry and to make a new faces uh, for the fashion design. So we are interested in any solution and interested in any people that would like to work together with us. That is also why I'm here today. We, I look for, we look for more people to join the, the, the project, to join us, the community. Yes. Does that answer your question? Sure. The gentleman over there in the blue pullover, would you like to ask a question now? Okay, uh, first, thank you, thank you for your very interesting presentation. My question is that if I compare with some other industries like electronics, they moved the production out to cheap labor countries, like perhaps Vietnam, I know of China. And now that there, there is increased level of automation, they're moving this production back to countries in Europe because they don't need the labor anymore. There's so much automation. Aren't you afraid that the same thing may, may happen in, in the textile industry, that it, it will move out of Vietnam because you don't need the, the, the hand labor anymore, you only need programmers and uh, uh, technicians and, and no laborers anymore? Yeah, so I believe that with technology, for instance, now, instead of working for a big factory earning very little salary, I think that there will, I, I, I can afford a machine that I can produce my own clothes and sell my own clothes to the market. So that is the goal, that the technology becomes so cheap that even the laborer can afford it, can do some, some, some stuff themselves and be able to make their own business instead of rely on big factory. And also, um, it's our idea of, uh, um, how to say, uh, of making a uh, connection of uh, all the level of, um, of uh, um, production. You know, some designer, they, they will not um, um, produce themselves. They, 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 they focus on re creating the, um, the design and they still need the people to sew this kind of uh, fabric together. And uh, that's what we, we're thinking maybe in the future we can, um, how to say, dismiss the middleman, the, the big factory, then designer can contact directly with the people inside Vietnam. And we can also have a opportunity to make our own business by on new technology. Okay, thank you. So, uh, are there any more questions in the room? Over there, one? Okay, so actually I have two questions. The first one is, have you considered using 3D body scanning to obtain the body shape instead of just taking measurements? Because I guess measurements are not everything. Uh, bodies with the same me measurements can uh, look a little different and 3D body scanning might be uh, more precise. Um, I have a problem. I don't really um, understand the question. Uh, you can assume. use like uh, cameras from different angles to uh, import the whole body model into the computer and yes. then use it to uh, check close on it. Yes, that was I mentioned um, in the three D uh, body measurement. We in the future we like to to use our smartphone to take. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, and if Is you can have it to develop an application on the smartphone, <laughs> that would be cool. All right. <laughs> Uh, and the second question is, how do you uh, cut the patterns in materials? Do you use scissors, man do it manually, or do you yeah, use so, lasers? Yeah, so um, there are two, there's an um, uh, industrial machine that you, they can cut for you, and for the tiler make, for instance, this one. Everything is done by hand. I see. Uh, everything is done by hand, but also, like, Big companies that are H and M, they send the um, their clothes to the factory, and then they have big machine to cut the the fabrics. So answer your question. Yes, and thank you for your talk. It was thank you for the question. Well. Yes. Thanks. Thank you for your question, Africa. Do we have another question from the internet? Yes, last question from the internet is regarding um, the big manufacturers. So um, you talked about standardized formats. And it would be interesting for us to know whether there is any interest from the big manufacturers also in your standardized formats, whether you had already t some talks or they contacted you or something like that. Um, so the big companies, um, so earlier this year, 
not the the the, uh, not the 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 people who produce clothes, but we talk to brothers, the the company who produce the sewing machine, and actually they saw uh, they show a big interest in uh, in in our idea, and um, they they um, they intended to join our MeshCon um, a few months ago, but unfortunately the engineer has some kind of engagement and he couldn't show up. But they we are still in touch uh, with brothers, and uh, they show great interest on the project. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, my question is, the industrial machines, um, sorry, I'm here. My question is, the industrial machines are more expensive because they're bigger, and the printers, individual printers are cheaper because they're smaller. Is that the reason, or is there a technological difference between the two which makes the industrial machines more expensive to acquire by the average person? Industrial machine, they can produce faster, they can produce more. Uh, and also, they can do more stuff. That is more, sp yeah, it's more expensive. Is it uh, the question? Yeah, that's fine. Yes, thank you. Are there any more questions there in the back? Who was first, you or you? Okay, go, yeah, go away, ask a question. Um, my question is quite simple. You say you are being at quite a lot of events next year, but do you have an assembly here so we just can go over and talk to you after that? Uh, yes, um, we um, we have a group of people here actually. Um, and I just arrived today and the members in my group saying that we have, uh, we will meet with Andres, where are you? Andres, are you here? Uh, so where is it the space that we, that we ha have here? I don't know. This is my first time here. I don't know the, the area around, but, but our member, I, I think they have, they know where to meet. Uh, Mario. Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, and where is it? Where are so, you located? Do you need a microphone? Okay, so um, this, the space with the other knitting and sewing machines uh, is in Saal 3, uh, Saal 3 uh, in the uh, uh, right um, corner in the back of the room. Um, I think if you're interested, you can uh, check this out and um, you should uh, maybe announce where you will be staying after the talk. So if people want to ask questions directly to you without the big audience, they yes. have a chance to meet you up after the talk. I will be there with them, yes. Okay, so so yes. uh, Hong yes. Fu will be in Saal 3 uh, at the Munich CCC with the other knitting machines. Are there any more questions? You have a question. Yes. Awesome. Um, as we saw the rise of 3D printing, we saw a lot of struggle with, with patents. Um, so I, I already saw, when, when I looked into that earlier, I saw that those needles are somehow patented by brother or something. Is there is there a movement there to free them in a way of not having patents there, maybe with the uh, free uh, printing uh, brother machine there? Uh so you know this question will be best answered by our uh, one of the developer there. Uh, Kristen, would you like to, to answer that question? <laughs> I can, <laughs> at least I can try. Um, um, yeah, the most most parts of the machines can be built by yourself, um, but as you just mentioned, the needles um, are still parts which you have to buy. Also, because um, it's not that easy to to build them, um, but um, it's no witchcraft. So, uh, if you saw such a needle, you can have a look at it. It's really simple built up. So. Um, Perhaps if somebody can think of a, another slightly another uh, layout, you can often avoid patent or whatever uh, restrictions. Yeah. So it's not like in 3D printing where we basically have everything that makes sense patented. So it's basically just the needle and everything else is kind of open as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. In this in this example, the open knit uh, machine, um, you saw uh, pretty many. Uh, parts were 3D printed, so it's also not that uh, easy to assemble. So if you want to start right away, uh, perhaps it's better to get a, an old machine which is complete and working and uh, start with this. And uh, yeah, building an open-knit machine is perhaps a little bit for the 
more advanced uses. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? No? So thank you for attending. Um, give a warm round of applause to Hong Fu. <laughs> and her... Thank you, very, thank you very much, and I would like to say thank you to Young for a very welcoming in the beginning, and thank you to, I don't know how you said, Andrews over there. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.